ज्ञानांजन शलकया चक्षुर्मृत तस्म श्रीगुरव नम गौरवे गौरचंद्रयाधिके तदर ये कृष्णय कृष्ण भक्त तदक्त नमो नम Last time we've seen Vedanta Sutra, Tarka Pratishta Nat. Tarka logic, a Pratishta has no solid ground, so it cannot give you the full truth, uh, the full uh, aspect of the absolute truth. Vedanta has nothing against logic. It is helpful in many way to understand Tattva Siddhanta to defeat wrong theories. or even to prove the existence of god hmm? for example yuri gagarin went to is the first man to go into outer space and when he came back he said i have the proof that god doesn't exist because i didn't see him everybody is saying god is in the sky and there was no god so therefore he doesn't exist Of course this argument is very foolish. Even if God was somewhere in the sky, that doesn't mean you can see him. But also materialists they base their truth, their uh, whatever they know on the sight on the on the senses. Pratyaksha. So anumana is a deduction. This is logic. and sometimes it goes be beyond the senses because you can think and this is one quality that human beings have to be able to understand things by their intelligence so udayana was a, a philosopher indian philosopher of the 10th century he was a logician he was studying nyaya and he wrote nyaya kusumanjali the offering uh, the offering of flowers to nyaya and he gives many different proof of the existence of god they are very much alike what you can find in aristotle for example the prime mother uh udayana is saying there must be a, a, an original cause because if there's no original cause we know that every effect has a cause and if we go back all the way that we must have a primer cause otherwise it will be an infinite regress what comes before then something else and something else and something else so there must be a primal cause so this is one kind of a proof of the existence of god and then the other existence that he he, he brings about 10 or 12 different point i'm not going to discuss them all because um i can summarize them and also with the most modern understanding like i to- told you about aristotle hmm? so the other one is uh, intelligence uh, what you call today uh, what people call today the fine tuning of the universe if the universe was not perfectly coordinated and even today uh the planets are going around the sun in a circular motion and nothing is colliding uh there's a precise um you can calculate uh the season the years and so on and so forth because it is so precise so the fine tuning of the universe means there's an intel- intelligent being the creationist the christian who say that actually there was a big bang and everything was coordinated by the will of god god created the big bang they said there's an intelligent design there's a designer who is intelligent because when you see the effect you must uh think with the cause must be very intelligent so those are called cosmological proof uh, this is a, a field of theology called natural theology the cosmological proof means there's a prime cause there's a fine tuning there's an intelligent being and so on and so forth though that's most famous arguments to prove the existence of god through logic then there's the ontological argument the ontological argument ontology it's the uh, field of metaphysics saying that what is really existing so 
uh, Saint Anselm, 11th century. He was a monk, uh, Irish monk. He uh, mm, postulated something like this. Everyone can conceive in his mind the existence of a supreme being. That is, someone who is perfect. He has all the, different, all the qualities that we can think of. And he is greater than anyone that we can conceive. So this is the first part of the argument. Anyone can conceive in his mind a supreme being endowed with all kinds of qualities. And he is considered to be greater in our mind than anyone that we can think of. And the second part of the argument is, this being must also be conceived as existing in reality, and not just in the mind, otherwise it would not be that great. You understand the argument? I can conceive in my mind someone so great that no one can be greater than him. But that person, that being, must also be existing in reality. Otherwise, he would not be that great. To be great means to be true. So that is the argument. But of course, you can have counter-argument against all those different uh, proof of God. This is what Immanuel Kant, uh, in, a nine, in, a, um, uh, in the 18th century, is doing with critique of pure reason. He's saying that actually, well, I can think of something that doesn't really exist in reality. And the mind doesn't have, the human mind doesn't have this power to understand what is infinite. Uh, Descartes also was saying the idea of infinity. Because we can conceive infinity in our mind, therefore it must exist. But Kant doesn't say infinity doesn't exist. He doesn't say God doesn't exist. He just says we cannot conceive of God through our mind. And this is what we are coming to. Yes, logic is interesting. And we can give those arguments about the fine-tuning of the universe to the materialist, but they will counter-argue. Because logic means you bring one point and someone else is bringing another point, and you have no choice, actually, when you are uh, speaking to someone who is a not-believer. But the proof, you know, doesn't come from our mind, from logic, because you cannot prove, you know, the absolute truth. You cannot prove Krishna is Sarva Karana Karanam. He's uh, Ishvara Parama. Uh, he is the uh, supreme being and he is Sarva Karana Karanam, the source of all causes, the cause of all causes. But how can we define that Krishna is Sarva Karana Karanam? Just by saying it, we know it comes from Brahma Samhita, so it comes from scriptures. And this is our sutra today. Verse, uh, sutra from the second uh, chapter, first part. 27 Sutra, Shrute Stu Shabda Mulatvat. Two means, in, in two means but, so there's an objection that is removed. But all these different conceptions about Nyaya, about uh, uh, also the, he discussed Vedanta, uh, the, the author of Vedanta discussed also how some uh, thinker are saying that we are created by atoms, the Vesheshaka. Uh, Philosophy is saying that combination of atoms. No, Vedanta has nothing against it. Neither has anything against logic. But it is not, it is not rooted in scripture. Because the original cause of the uh, universe is Brahman. Why? How do we know? Shrutes tu shabda mula. Shabda mula. It is rooted. Mula means the root in shabda. Shrutes. What we heard. The shruti and Shabda. Shastra, the only means of acquiring knowledge. What we call Pramana is the mean of acquiring knowledge. Pratyaksha and Anumana cannot give you the full picture. We need them, of course, to read, to hear, to deduce, to understand. Of course we need. But Shabda must be supreme. What is Shabda saying? Because what is, what is the uh, Vedavyas is trying to prove Atato uh, Brahma Jigyasa. Now we have to inquire about Brahman. What is Brahman? Janmadi Yasya Yataha. And all the first chapter have tried to prove Sarva Shastra Samanvaya. 
All the Shastra are saying that Brahman is Janmadiyasya. He is the source of everything. The second chapter is called Avirodha. Second chapter of Vedanta is called Avirodha, meaning we are defeating all the wrong conclusions. So the wrong conclusion, Nyaya, Yoga, Sankhya, Vaishishika, then after he's going to speak about Buddhist, Jain, Shivaist, uh, Shakta, those who worship Shakti, and Sharvaka, those who are materialists, they all have wrong conclusions. And so he's saying, look at the scripture, the Shruti are saying, just as a spider spins its web, or how the hair on the body, hair on the head, are growing from a living source, uh, or just like a turtle, uh, its limbs is stretched out, and then it's he again draws them back inside so the universe appears from Brahman. This is the scripture. Shankar may say this is not how it's happening, it's all an illusion. That's how he always sang. But the Vaishnavas, starting with Sri Pad Ramanuja Acharya, then Madhva Acharya, Nimbarka Acharya, and Balabha Acharya, and Baladev Vidya Bhushana, they all sang. Brahman has potency. He has some kind of Shakti Shakti Parinamat. This is the Shakti which transforms itself and create the world. Hmm? So this is the Siddhanta. So now I know that some of devotees they are saying all oh, this Siddhanta, it is boring. It is hard to understand, boring, it's a waste of time. Huh? So I rather hear Rasa Lila, Rasa Kata all day long. This is very sweet. But it is, uh, uh, it is written also by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, by Gurudev, by so many Acharyas, that if you don't understand the basic truth, and it's, it's not dogmatic beliefs, those are not things you have to uh, believe without understanding. This is what I call a dogma. A dogma was created by man, but nobody understands what it means, but we just have to believe it. No, it has nothing to do. You have to understand Siddhanta. Huh? And so it's very easy to have a wrong understanding of Rasa Lila, of Rasa Kata, of the Guru, of Krishna, and so many other things, because there are so many theories that go on in the world, and we're going to become confused. Shri Prabhupada, Jagat Guru Shri Prabhupada, worked so hard to establish Siddhanta, defeating so many wrong opinions. Once in a while, he said, to his disciple, that he was able to defeat the non-devotee's argument very easily. He said, I know the art uh, of defeating these people like karate. I know how to push a person uh, on a weak, his weak point, I see his weak point, and I push it until he dies. This is what he said. I find their weak point and push push it until he died. This seems to be quite incredible and quite, uh, oh, this is not cool at all. You know, Guru should be cool, he should be s laughing and smiling and loving everybody because we all won. But actually he wanted to establish strong Siddhanta, he wanted to show us young disciple how the people in this world, no matter who, who they are, big scientists and big PhD and those who have Sanskrit study and everything, how they were foolish. In front of Prabhupada, I've seen personally how, how they lose all their composure. They don't know what to answer because Prabhupada is so logically perfect and to the point that they cannot answer anything. Once in Geneva, and this is the first time I saw Srila Prabhupada in Switzerland, he he was receiving a big Sanskrit uh, scholar, and this uh, Sanskrit scholar had written a book on Krishna, and he brought it to to Prabhupada. He said, um, "Swamiji, it took me sixteen years to write this book." And Prabhupada just looked at it front and back. Of course, it's in French; he couldn't understand. But he looked front and back, and then Prabhupada said, "Yes," and he still made so many mistakes. Prabhupada knew that actually he doesn't have to read. He knows that actually it's all uh, wrong. Siddhanta. So all the big, big, big famous people, also famous singers, 
uh, uh, those that actually were considered to, to us like idols before, they look foolish in front of Prabhupada because Prabhupada has such a strong, sharp understanding of life and of God. And it, he's trying to establish this Siddhanta in our heart. If we can have this Siddhanta in our heart, how we can actually uh, uh, see through uh, the lies of scientists and all kind of Appa Siddhanta and also all the, uh, the faults in different... Not, not the finding fault, that is not the point. We are not arguers. We're not creating problems everywhere. We don't argue for arguing. But at least for ourselves, we should know the truth. We should know what we have to follow. What is uh, proper Siddhanta? What is proper Sadhana? What is the uh, Sadhya, the goal? We have to know these things. We have to know what is Jiva Tattva, what is Maya Tattva, what is uh, Krishna Tattva, what is Rasa Tattva, all these things, Guru Tattva, all these things we have to know thoroughly. This is not just to show off, to say, oh, you see, I'm such a big, uh, big head, huh? big scholar, big head. No, you are nothing. Everything comes from your Guru. And this is the point. I heard this recently from Shripad Bodhaya Maharaj, he was speaking about his own Gurudev, uh, uh, Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj. Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, he was such a humble person. And he was saying, maybe you think I am a bogus guru. That is okay. I am not authentic guru. But I can assure you that my spiritual master is perfectly bona fide. And he is, he is perfectly realized. And it's the same thing. I can say about myself, anybody can say, maybe you don't like what I look like, how the way I speak, maybe you don't like my explanation, maybe I don't explain good, maybe you think I have so many defects, and it's okay. I do. But I can assure you that Srila Prabhupada didn't have any of these defects, neither Srila Gurudev or Srila Bhakti Rakshak, Srila Goswami Maharaj, and so many of them, they, they were perfect representant of the Absolute. And this is who we want to follow. And if we can just repeat what they say, this is the perfection of our life. Thank you and see you next time. Bansha Kalpa Tarubya Cha Kripa Sindhu Bhyo Patitaram Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha